Nico Allen Jenkins was born September 16, 1986 in Denver, Colorado to parents David McGee and Lori Jenkins. His father wasn't a big part of his life and his mother, well, we'll get to her later. Nico Jenkins was pretty much always a troubled kid. In 1993, at just the young age of 7, Nico brought a 25 caliber handgun to Highland Elementary School. It took them 4 years to accuse Jenkins of the crime, but by the age of 11, he had already been accused of stealing three times. This was pretty much the last time Jenkins was ever free for a significant amount of time. In 1998, he was sent to a group home, but was quickly sent to youth detention center for hitting a minor with a clothes hanger and leaving wit marks on the child. Once Nico was released from the detention center, he went to go live with his mother, but he was quickly sent right back for assaulting a kid with a knife. I mean, Nico had caused so much trouble, his probation was revoked in August 2001 and he was sent to Youth Rehabilitation and Treatment Center. And one year later, he was sent to Omaha and soon began threatening those around him. His own father, David McGee, wrote in court documents, Nico has threatened my life and pulled a sawed-off shotgun on me at my own home. Soon after, Nico stole two cars at gunpoint. In one incident, he asked a 20-year-old woman for a ride, and when she refused, Nico jumped in her car with a shotgun and drove to 22nd Street and Grand Avenue. There, he ordered her to get out. In 2003, Nico was sent back to prison for the robberies and wasn't released for a decade. And the violence didn't end in prison. He was always in and out of the hole, once for assaulting a guard on Forlaw at his grandmother's funeral. Another was for starting a prison riot. He was disciplined on several occasions for his tattoos, attacks on other inmates, making weapons out of toothbrushes. Once Nico had finally got out a decade later, he reconnected with his family and a bunch of female admirers. I mean, this guy was getting letters left and right from women calling themselves his wife. Crazy, right? I mean, I guess some women want to know where their man's at at all times. Nico had also connected with a man he met in prison named Curtis Bradford. Bradford's family would always tell them to stay away from Nico, but he wouldn't listen. Something, well, he later regret. Just 11 days after he was released from prison for carjacking, Nico's killing spree began, and the first of his victims were Juan Pena and George Roos. On August 11th, just eight days later, Nico had killed once again, and this time it was his friend he met in prison, Curtis Bradford. Bradford had just posted a picture of them just hours before Nico shot him in the head. It was later revealed that Nico killed Bradford because his sister was convinced that he was responsible for shooting their house up. And just two days later, Nico pulled over a lady by the name of Andrea Coover and shot her four times before stealing her car. On August 30th, Jenkins was finally arrested, but not for the murders. He was arrested for making terroristic threats. But by then, they had so much evidence against him. Realize I got Nico Jenkins? Do you not realize that? I got Nico Jenkins. I got you. What do you mean you got me? I got your DNA at the murder scene. I got your DNA in the car. Sir. I got the weapon. I got Nico Jenkins. I don't need to make it. I don't care about anything. I just want other people that are involved in it. What the hell happened out there? And why? All right, you know, I know who. I know what. I know when. I know where. And then when I talked to you earlier, you were saying stuff about a carjacking. Once Nico was arrested, it was later revealed that his family played a huge part in all four of the murders. Nico's sister, Erica Jenkins, and cousin, Christine Bordos, acted as prostitutes to lure Juan Pena and George Roos in. At first, it was supposed to be just a robbery, but Nico had other plans. And fast forward 10 days later, Erica Jenkins, Christine Bordos, and now Nico's uncle, Warren Levering, went looking for a car to steal and found Andrea Kruger on her way home from work. Both Nico and Warren hopped out of the car and ordered Kruger to get out. And once she did, Nico shot her four times before stealing her car. I mean, his own mother, Lori Jenkins, played a huge role in purchasing Nico's ammunition used to kill three of the four victims. Even after Nico had killed Juan Pena and George Roos, all Nico's mother had to say was, did you at least get money? I mean, just look at their family tree. It's nothing but felons. Once Nico was in jail, he got a hold of a blade and started slicing 666 on his face. I mean, he even sliced the middle of his tongue to make it look like a snake, smearing blood all over the cell wall. 
He even went as far as slicing his penis to make it look like an ancient Egyptian serpent god. Nico ended up needing 27 stitches. He had claimed he worshipped Yeti and said it told him to murder the poor people. They ended up having to put socks under his cell door from stopping item from passing underneath. He was no longer allowed to shave from keeping him from cutting himself. During his murder trial in Douglas County, Jenkins was assessed by a doctor who concluded Nico was a psychopath, one of the most dangerous people he's ever encountered. On August 19, 2004, Nico filed a lawsuit against the state of Nebraska for $24.5 million for wrongfully releasing him from prison, stating his claims of hearing voices from a pulpit were repeatedly ignored. I mean, this guy was crazy. He even blamed the correction officers for his four murders. Jenkins' uncle, Warren Levering, pleaded no contest in the role of killing Andrew Kruger. He ended up getting sentenced to 40 years in prison. Nico's cousin, Christine Bortles, ended up only getting 20, but because she played a huge role in convicting Jenkins and several of his family members. Maloney Jenkins and Lori Sells, sister of Nico and Erica Jenkins, also testified against them. Maloney's reason stating that Erica had gotten her in so much trouble in the past. She was convicted of a felony robbery in 2005, and in 2003, she was responsible for a carjacking. And in that 2003 carjacking, her, Erica, and one of her cousins assaulted a woman with a stun gun before stealing her car, saying that she was done covering up information for Erica and Nico, and that Erica had been thrilled about the murders. Also noting that Erica stated that it was her first murder. She even expressed frustration of Nico shooting Curtis Bradford right after she did, saying that it was like claiming her first murder. Erica ended up getting life in prison, plus another 80 years on weapon charges for allegedly beating an inmate at the Nebraska Center for Women. And that other inmate just happens to be her cousin, Christine Bordos. I mean, she beat her with a padlock. She gave her a concussion, broken nose, broken finger, broken arm. I mean, it's crazy. She had just testified against her. You'd think they'll keep them away from each other. Nico's mother, Lori Jenkins, ended up getting 10 years for providing ammunition. But later, the court added another five years to her sentence. She won't be eligible for release until 2028 and by then she'll be 61. As for Nico, well he pleaded not guilty, and then changed his mind and pleaded guilty, and then changed his mind again and said he was ineligible for trial on grounds of insanity. But the judge quickly dismissed his appeals, and he was sentenced to life in prison. But in May 2017, Jenkins was sentenced to death by a three-judge panel. Alright guys, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you like the content, go ahead and subscribe. If you have anybody else you'd like me to do next, go ahead and comment down below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.